As we begin this celebration of a wonderful woman, let us hear these ancient words of wisdom. For everything there is a season, a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to gather what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, what are you doing? a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Can you not hear it? And so we gather here, people who love Beth Huey. There has been weeping. There has been mourning. We have seen her life slip away slowly. But we have also laughed. We have also danced. Saw it in the pictures. We celebrated. And as she led us, we enjoyed every day of her life with her. What a gift she was. We come now to celebrate her. Beth Huey, a daughter, a sister, an aunt, a very special friend to so many. We come to share great and precious memories. We celebrate that she has begun her eternal life of joy and wholeness. She's with her father and so many more. Beth lived her life to the fullest. She was a strong person. She was a compassionate person. We celebrate that we were gifted to know her, to be with her, to love her. Let us join now in prayer together. Holy God, we are so grateful for all Beth has meant to us. Continue to heal our hearts. Be a special presence this day for all of us gathered here. For all Beth's dear friends here in Florida and around the world, especially those joining us via Zoom. Help us remember that ear has not heard, nor I seen, nor human imagination envisioned what you prepared for Beth as she came to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to especially greet the Zoom audience with us today and want to particularly uh, make note of anyone who needs uh, sign language interpretation. We do have uh, one interpreter here, you can see, and there is another interpreter on Zoom. If you pin that person, hover over their picture and hit the three dots and, and hit the word pin, the interpreter will fill your screen. I want to share with you a scripture that I have never shared at a celebration of life, but I've never had a celebration of life with Beth Huey. <laughs> <laughs> On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going to the region between Samaria and Galilee, as he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They saw them. He said, go and show yourselves to the priests. They went, and they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He fell at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And this one was a Samaritan. Then Jesus said, hey, weren't there 10 people healed? Where are the other nine? Was none of them found to return and praise God except this foreigner? Then he said to the man, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. One of the things I think Jesus make, uh, people make the mistake about Jesus is they think that he was always a nice, gentle guy. <laughs> he wasn't. In fact, next time you're in uh, 
church or you hear a story of Jesus, here's what I want you to do. I want you to imagine that who is in place of Jesus. Why do I say that? Because Beth Huey wouldn't let you get away with anything. <laughs> she was passionate about things should be done the right way. Yes. The right way. And she was as compassionate as Jesus, too. If you needed something, she would find it. If you, you were in trouble in some way, she would come and help you any way she could. She would literally give you the shirt off her back. That movie was just like Jesus. And that's a pretty wonderful thing to say about anybody. I remember the first time I met Beth, she told me the story of when somebody had stolen her purse. <laughs> By the end of the story, I really felt sorry for the robber. I don't know how to do the story. <laughs> but, you know, being scared of Beth, uh, I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more about that. It seemed logical being born on uh, Halloween. Grandpa Huey dubbed her name Spooky, you know, for a reason. She was someone who you did not mess with. Even, not just humans, creatures of all kinds. The story is told that when she was one day dog sitting for about seven or eight dogs, they were all barking and she was on the phone and she said, hey, I'm on the phone here. All the dogs. <laughs> I remember to the last, the second to the last time I went to see Beth, she was able to say a few words to me, uh, not many, but you know, Beth loved a joke. And I was just doing some singing for her, which I do sometimes. And then I told her this story from my wife, who's also a pastor and was a hospice chaplain at this time of this story. She went to be with someone on their very last day and was singing for them. And suddenly this person who had not really communicated in several days opened her eyes and called my wife close. My wife leaned in and said, yes. And the woman said, no singing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when Beth laughed too. That little <clears throat> I said, okay, I'll take that as you want me to stop too. <laughs> She was herself to the very end, surrounded by her family. I did see her one more time. She was still with us, but she was almost with the folks on the other side too. So she was going in and out, but she was surrounded by love. You all did a great job of being with her in these last times. She knew you loved her. She was someone, though sometimes frightening, it was hard not to love a woman who would drive herself to the emergency room and not leave till they actually listened to her. <laughs> Beth was a member of this church, often came with her mom, was always glad to see Beth when she would come. There are so many stories to tell, so much to remember, so much to celebrate. I'm going to invite Bonnie to come up now, and she's going to share some words, and then after her, Angie is going to share some things. Bye. Hi. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Bonnie. Beth was my big sister by a year and five months. And right now, if possible in heaven, she just split me off for time. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a speaker, so I've decided to read this so that I wouldn't forget anything. 
My family would like to thank everyone for being with us today to celebrate Beth's life. Beth was the second oldest of five kids. She was our daughter, sister, sister-in-law, aunt, niece, cousin, and friend. She was born in Ohio on October 31st, 1959 on Halloween. She loved being born on Halloween and was nicknamed Spooky by Grandpa Louie years ago. We moved to Buffalo when she was seven years old. She was involved in brownies, Girl Scouts, and sold more Girl Scout cookies than you can imagine. She grew up on the Brady Bunch, the Partridge Family, and Bewitched. She mastered the hula hoop and babysat all the time. She started sewing and became quite a seamstress. We moved to Bradenton, Florida when she was 17, and she got her first job at Steak and Shake, where she met Tracy, her best friend of 45 years. She graduated from Manatee High School in 1978. After Steak and Shake, she became a rental agent at Carlton Arms and then decided to go to beauty school. In 1985, I opened Twisted Scissors Hair Salon and Beth followed me to work and manage the salon until she decided to go back to school to become a surgical tech. She always wanted to be in the medical field, so went full-time as a scrub and switched to part-time as a hairdresser and continued to do both for years. Beth had 36 years at Twisted Scissors and 27 years at Premier Surgery Center. She was a huge animal lover that had a soft spot for dogs and the squirrels at the shop. She also loved manatees and, of course, loved her green M&Ms. Our brother David had a great analogy about how Beth was a lot like an M&M. Hard on the outside and sweet on the inside. That was definitely Beth. Then one year, America voted on a new color M&M. It was between purple and blue. Beth's favorite color is purple, and as we all know, blue won. She was so mad that she boycotted blue and never ate one of them. She would leave me little piles of blue M&Ms at the shop. That was our Beth. She had the biggest heart and would do anything for anyone. If you were looking for something specific and couldn't find it, she would find it. She was a great shopper. She also loved to fix things. If she couldn't fix it, she would get our dad to help. After dad passed away, she would call our brother Richard. You cannot believe how many tools that girl had. When she was diagnosed on June of 2019 with a glioblastoma brain tumor, it was because she took herself to the hospital to get an MRI. She knew something was wrong, and even the ER doctor thought she was crazy when she wanted an MRI and was shocked when we got the results. She said she wanted to fight, and she fought a hard fight for 21 months. The worst part of Beth, for Beth was her communication. We all know how much Beth loved to talk. And when her words started going, it was very frustrating to her. Our brother David said that Richard and I learned to speak Beth because we could understand her the best. About a week and a half before she passed away, she had a small stroke that took away all her words. And when she couldn't swallow the chocolate milkshake, our brother Richard would bring her every visit we knew it wouldn't be long. I headed to Florida, and that Friday, when I got into town, our brother Richard, our brother Donald, and his wife Julie, and I met at the facility Beth was in. When we got to her room, we FaceTimed our brother David, and for the last time, all five of us siblings were together. We talked, we told some stories, and David prayed over Beth. When it was time to go because Beth was getting tired, I said to Donald, Take your mask down and tell Beth you love her. Donald is deaf and Beth couldn't talk, so it was hard for them to communicate. So he took that mask down and as clear as I've ever heard him speak, he said, I love you, Beth. And with everything she could muster up, she put her hand into the I love you sign so that Donald would see it. That's our Beth. She wanted Donald to know. Richard and Tracy and I continued to see Beth every day. And Tracy and I would stay really late because both of our husbands were in other states. We told stories, we laughed, we cried, we talked about what a fighter she is, and it reminded us of when she chased that guy down and stole her purse. <laughs> she had no fear. Then about a day and a half before Beth passed away, we were talking across her because they say that hearing is the last to go, 
And at that point, she's laying straight with her eyes shut and no movement at all. All of a sudden, her eyes open wide and she raises her left hand up to the ceiling and left it there for the longest time, then laid it back down and 15 minutes later, boom, eyes back open and hand up to the ceiling. In the Bible, it says we will worship in eternity. It, it looked like Beth was worshiping, and clearly that night she saw something or heard something, and then put the arm back down and closed her eyes again as if nothing happened. We were with her every day. The last night we were there until 1.30 in the morning, and the breathing was so normal that the nurse said, I don't think it will be tonight, so we left to go back to mom's. Beth died early that morning after family was gone. That's our Beth. Beth was loved by so many people, and this will be a different world without her. My family would like to thank everyone for being such a special part of Beth's life and for understanding that with everyone Beth knew, this was the only way to do the service. In our family, our dad never said goodbye. He said, toot, toot. He had a strong Southern accent, so he said, toot, toot, Bessie Ann, and toot, toot, Bonne May. And Beth and I carried that on after dad died. So this is my final toot, toot to my sister. <laughs> And I know if she has a front row in heaven right now, and she's saying to to fun of May right back to me. Thank you so much, Bonnie. I just wanted to share with you just one more uh, remembrance, uh, Richard particularly. Uh, shared with me, and it, it is a phrase, and I don't think you can say it any better than he did. So I quote him saying that Beth was more than a sister, she was really a close friend. We always helped each other out. And that pretty much summarizes this. I'm going to invite Angie to come forward. She's going to share with us that's obituary and also a scripture of great hope. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to get through this without crying. So, <laughs> at the end of the week, 61 of Brainton entered into eternal rest on March 25th, 2021. After a long and difficult fight due to life on the Brainton, Beth was born in Cleveland, Ohio, and moved with her family to Bradenton in 1978. Beth was a 1978 graduate of Manatee High School. She was a hairdresser for 36 years at Twisted Scissors in Bradenton, but one career just wasn't enough. Beth went back to school and worked as a surgical te technician for the last 27 years at the New Surgical Center in Sarasota, while continuing to beautify her clientele at Twisted Scissors. Beth is preceded in death by her father, Hillard Budwee, and is survived by her mother, Marjorie, and brother like Richard Lee, <laughs> sister and husband, Bonnie and Ida Chauvin, brother and wife, David and Angie Huey, and brother and wife, Donald and Julie Huey, nieces and nephews, her long life best friend, Tracy Nix, and many adopted children and pets who all called her Aunt Beth. As we've already heard, Beth has been described as a force of nature, always willing to grab a toolbox and do whatever needed. One of Beth's favorite hobbies over the years was spending time at her sewing machine, making new outfits and stitching up clothes for those who need it. When Bonnie was cleaning out Beth's purse and wallet, she found a prayer by Helen Steiner Rice that Beth had carried for many years. I'm not sure that was me. Life without purpose is barren indeed. There can't be a harvest unless you plant seed. There can't be an attainment unless there's a goal. And man's a robot unless there's a soul. If you send no ships out, no ships will come in. 
and unless there's a contest, nobody can win. For games can't be won unless they are played, and prayers can't be answered unless they are prayed. So whatever is wrong with your life today, you'll find a solution if you kneel down and pray. Not just for pleasures, enjoyment, and health, not for honors and prestige and wealth, but pray for the joy of unselfish giving. For great is your gladness and rich your reward when you make your life's purpose the choice of the Lord. Finally, I would love to share with you the scripture of 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 through 18. Now, concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you. For those yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. For that indeed, that is what you are doing to all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you brothers to do this more and more, and to aspire to live quietly, and to mind your own affairs, and to work with your hands, as you were instructed, so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be independent, to be dependent on no one. But we do not want you to be uninformed brothers about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring those to him who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one of these with one another with these words. Paul wrote this first letter to bring comfort to the Thessalonians. The church in Thessalonica misunderstood what happened to those who died. They were confused over the temporary nature of death and understandably were grieved and unsettled at the thought of their loved ones missing out on future rest and blessings. Because of the redemption Jesus brought through his death and life, we are without knowledge about those who pass. We have the promise of hope. We have the promise of eternal life through Jesus. We have comfort. We have comfort because we will be together again experiencing the fullness of God's love in a collective and embodied way, together forever at last. But until then, we love you. After this service today, we are all invited to gather in the fellowship hall in the back for a meal of some of Beth's favorite foods, there will be no blue M&M's. Uh, <laughs> 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 After the, our closing prayer today, uh, we're going to play uh, the, the uh, picture. Um, picture. Slideshow. Slideshow. Thank you again. Because <laughs> I know some of you didn't see the beginning of it. And uh, when that is done, uh, this part will be formally over. Um, in just a couple of minutes, uh, if you wait, I'll turn around the folks who are on Zoom and you can look at that screen and, uh, and talk to them if you want. I can inform them that we can arrange to do that if anybody wants it to. Let us pray together. Oh God, thank you again for the gift of death for her trueness to herself, for her love, for her kindness, for that soft, loving center behind that hard candy shell. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, that you made her, that you loved her, 
and we look forward to being with her again as Angie shared. Thank you for giving us for the time we had and help us to live like Jesus with passion for justice, with healing, with tenderness and kindness as Beth did. Amen.